Early on in her career, Julia Roberts was commonly referred to as America's sweetheart. Aside from all of those rumors about her being difficult to work with on set, she was praised and celebrated for her roles in Pretty Woman, Sleeping with the Enemy, The Pelican Brief, and Erin Brockovich, to name a few. But in the year 2000, the tide changed. Julia went from being the most loved and highest paid actress to being called a little homewrecker after she started dating a married man named Danny Motor. Fix it, Jesus. This is the story of their romance, and you guessed it, besties, it's a hot, stinking mess. But before we get into it, don't forget to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of applewood smoked bacon jerky, freeze-dried goodies, and butter toffee peanuts. To give you better insight, we gotta take you back to 1987, when 19-year-old Julia Fiona Roberts Fiona? was filming a movie called Satisfaction alongside 35-year-old Liam Neeson. They dated for a bit, and some online sources state they briefly lived together, but they eventually called it quits. While filming the 1989 movie Steel Magnolias, she hit it off with her co-star Dylan McDermott. They reportedly got engaged. However, Julia ended their romance sometime around 1990. And then on June 14, 1991, 23-year-old Julia was set to marry fellow actor, 24-year-old Kiefer Sutherland. Architectural Digest reported that Kiefer bought her a Montana ranch as a wedding gift. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. On their wedding day, Kiefer was spotted moving out of the Hollywood Hills home he shared with Julia, and Julia was seen on a date with Kiefer's best friend and his Lost Boys co-star, Jason Patrick. <laughs> Julia and Jason jetted off to Ireland shortly thereafter. What? Oh, that is treacherous. Now, by this point, the media was trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with Julia. Yeah, because why the hell she running through all these men? Yeah. She got daddy issues. Actually, Auntie Regina, Julia's father passed away from throat cancer when she was 10, and sources reported that she hated her stepfather. See? I knew it. I knew it. What a tell you. So anyway, Julia later told Rolling Stone magazine that her wedding to Kiefer wasn't canceled at the last minute, and she and Kiefer had broken up some time before they were scheduled to get married. Either way, Kiefer was devastated, and his friendship with Jason was destroyed. She and Jason broke up after about a year. From there, she started dating musician Lyle Lovett in 1993. Three weeks after meeting, they got married. What in the Fantasia Barino is going on here? What in the terrible life decisions is going on? To no one's surprise, their marriage only lasted for two years, and they got divorced in 1995. Julia told the New York Daily News that she had no regrets, but their decision to get married was a miscalculation. Miscalculation, my ass. Y'all do know that y'all can date people, right? <laughs> you can have a lot of fun dating people for quite a while before you just up and marry their asses. Do y'all know that? Two years later, in 1997, she met actor Benjamin Bratt at a restaurant in Manhattan. Benjamin had her sprung. She told Oprah Winfrey, We're just ecstatically happy. We're drunk with joy 24 hours out of the day. We're sickening. They reportedly got tattoos of each other's initials. Ding, ding, ding. That's a red flag. That is a red ass flag. Benjamin was ready to settle down and start a family, although he was a bit bothered by Julia's level of fame. In 2000, while filming the movie The Mexican, Julia met a cameraman named Danny Motor. They hit it off immediately, but there was just one little problem. Julia was still with Benjamin, and Danny was married to a woman named Vera Steinberg, who worked as a makeup artist for several celebrities, including Eddie Murphy. Years later, while chatting with Gwyneth Paltrow, Julia said her life changed instantly when she met Danny, and it felt like a seismic shift occurred. He started writing her love letters, including one that was seven pages long, and they fell in love almost immediately. Seven pages? Now I'm all for romance, but he got too much time on his damn hands. Six months after meeting, Danny filed for divorce from Vera after four years of marriage and moved out of their home. Julia dumped Benjamin sometime around 2001, and he attempted to avoid questions about their breakup while on the red carpet. But when Julia was spotted out and about with Danny, the media put two and two together and assumed that Julia had dumped Benjamin to be with Danny. Once it was revealed that Danny was a married cameraman, people couldn't understand what Julia even saw in him. Why the hell would she break up with a hunk like Benjamin to be with someone like Danny? Hey, the heart wants what the heart wants, okay? And you know, Danny might have been packing. 
We, we just don't know. We don't know. And then came the questions about Julia's morals. By that point, the media was used to her bouncing around from man to man, but her flaunting around her new married boyfriend didn't sit well with many people. Julia later told Oprah that she wasn't the cause of Danny's divorce. She said, He had sorted his whole thing out, separate and apart from me. And I sorted my life out, separate and apart from him. Uh-huh. Yeah, but y'all was conspiring together. <laughs> okay. Vera wasn't willing to go without a fight, though. Sources reported that she refused to give up on her marriage, which allegedly left Julia and Danny in a problematic situation. As Vera continued to drag out the divorce, the press had more time to concoct stories about Julia being a homewrecker. In 2002, with the divorce still in limbo, Julia stepped out on the streets of West Hollywood wearing a shirt that read, A Low Vera, which was her attempt to throw some shade at Danny's estranged wife, Vera. So you stole a woman's husband, then you're gonna throw shade at her with a t-shirt out in public, huh? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. You might just be what they say you is, Julia. You might just be an old homewrecker. Later on during an interview with Oprah, Oprah asked Julia why she wore the shirt. Julia responded, I stand by my t-shirt. Julia also stated that the people involved in the situation knew why she was wearing it. I ain't gonna lie, aloe vera, aloe vera is pretty funny. <laughs> It's pretty funny, but it's still shady as fuck. Danny was able to finalize his divorce in June 2002, with some sources reporting that Julia also paid Vera $200,000 to go away. So basically, she bought that woman's husband from her. <laughs> she... Oh, okay. $200,000, that's it? Child, I've been like, plus my attorney fees, uh, add another zero. That, that the $200,000 ain't enough. That ain't enough. In July 2002, just one month after his divorce was finalized, Danny and Julia got married at her New Mexico ranch. A source told the Daily Mail that Julia chose her chauffeur to walk her down the aisle. Good. Not the damn chauffeur. Not the driver. I'd be like, you gonna pay me for this? You gonna pay me for walking you down the aisle? You don't pay me enough to drive this damn car and drive you and all your men around town. Now, you gonna have to add a little extra. You gonna have to pay me a little extra for walking your ass down the aisle, hell. I don't know how many more times I'm gonna have to do this when you get married. <laughs> That's what I would have said. A week after they got married, Vera told Britain's Sun newspaper, I'll never be able to forgive Julia. She's a husband stealer. It won't last with her anyway. She will be looking for a new husband within a year. Danny has a roving eye and he won't change. One of Danny and Vera's neighbors in their Woodland Hills, California neighborhood also told the publication that Danny left Vera with two mortgages, a stack of bills, and two dogs. Damn, he left the dogs behind too? Julia must have that ooh wee. <laughs> With all of her failed relationships, broken engagements, and her divorce, Oprah was curious how Julia knew that things would be different with Danny. Julia said every cell in her body lets her know Danny's the one. She also added that they were constantly together and spent 21 hours a day by each other's side. You trying to watch him, man? You scared he gonna slip off like he did, Vera? Because <laughs> let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something right now. Because some home records is listening right now. Some of y'all is home records. Some of y'all's home records just like Julia has. Listen, the way you catch them is the way you lose them. <laughs> I said what I said. During an interview with Good Morning America, Julia also explained she was born to be Danny's wife. Born to be the cameraman's wife. Okay, then. Lowered expectations. <laughs> One year after their wedding, they bought a $9 million home in Malibu. From Woodland Hills to Malibu. I ain't mad at you, Danny. You done came up. Now, I ain't saying he a gold digger. <laughs> Julia gave birth to twins in November 2004, and their third child was born in 2007. Things were going great for the couple. They purchased more properties in Hawaii and New York. They bought a home across the street from their primary home in Malibu, as well as an additional Malibu cottage. They worked on a few movies together, and during his downtime, Danny could be spotted surfing with his friends in Malibu. Julia eventually slowed down on her acting gigs to be with their family. In January 2017, OK Magazine reported that Danny had moved out of their family home in Malibu and into the home they had purchased across the street. An insider told the publication that the couple had been at odds over lingering problems, most notably Julia's desire to always be in charge and Danny's resentment that he wasn't the provider in their family. What I tell y'all? What did I tell y'all asses about marrying men who had less money? Their egos can't take it because men have an issue with marrying women who are, yeah, better than them. They got an issue with that because their ego takes a hit. Even though it's supposed to be a partnership, even though the woman ain't thinking nothing about that, she just love who she love, the man's ego takes a hit and he don't like that sh Nine months later in September 2017, there were still rumblings that a divorce was on the horizon. 
But by October 2017, it appeared that they were back on track. Julia told Harper's Bazaar UK, When I think about what makes my life my life and makes sense and just shines inside of me, it's him. What about your cherry? You don't give a shit about them, huh? Okay. But more rumors of marital issues emerged in 2018 when Life & Style magazine reported that there was still tension over Julia's controlling ways. They were also allegedly bumping heads over their different approaches to parenting, and Danny was struggling with living in Julia's shadow. <laughs> yep. Exhibit 2. Exhibit 1 was the fact that she was making more money. Exhibit 2 is that she is more famous. Despite Julia putting her career on hold for a few years, the insider stated, Danny was always of the belief that Julia still put her career ahead of his, and he resented it. In 2020, they decided to try something new. Or should I say, Julia decided to try something new. Oh hell. This is gonna be messy, ain't it? Ain't it? Just before America went into lockdown in 2020, they bought a century-old $8.3 million Victorian-style home in San Francisco. Julia was reportedly looking forward to renovating the home, while Danny was upset that he had to leave Malibu behind. Now I'm with Danny on this one, hell no. Nobody want to leave the beach to go live in an old-ass house with ghosts and shit. Sources reported that Danny objected to the move because his family and work connections were in Southern California, and he wanted to remain close to his surfing buddies in Malibu. An insider went on to say that their marriage went downhill almost immediately. The insider added, He didn't like the vibe or the weather. It put a strain on their marriage and wasn't getting better, no matter how nice Julia made their home. The insider told Life & Style magazine that Danny was ready to move back to Malibu, whether Julia joined him or not. In the end, Julia gave in. They put the home on the market for $11.3 million and moved back to Los Angeles together. With all this information hitting the internet, Julia told Harper's Bazaar that she and Danny tried to keep the divorce rumors away from their kids. She went on to say that all the speculation hurt her feelings because she's very proud of her marriage. She added, There's so much happiness wrapped up in what we found together. She joined Instagram to offer the public a peek into her private life with her husband and children. However, only the people she follows are allowed to comment. Oh, she's scared of them comments, ain't she? <laughs> you scared, scared. In December 2023, Life & Style magazine was back with more rumors about trouble in the Motor household. An insider told the publication that Julia and Danny were opposites and their differences were causing some issues. Danny enjoyed working, surfing, skateboarding, and photography, and he had a huge circle of the same friends who had been in his life for years. He enjoyed being around people. Meanwhile, Julia didn't have a lot of friends and preferred to spend time at home. The insider stated that Julia wasn't close to Danny's friends or family either, so she rarely accompanied him when he would hang out with them. Danny reportedly traveled to Fiji in the fall of 2023 to go on a surfing trip with some buddies while Julia stayed home. The insider said, Even though she doesn't want to go, Julia's been known to get jealous of all the time he spends away with the boys. What she really mean is she know that how she got him is how she probably gonna lose him. <laughs> and if he skirted away with her and left his first wife, he might do the same thing to her ass. She need uh, some therapy. She's scared to let people get close. And uh, so that's why she keeps to herself. And that's why she lean on Danny so hard. There are also rumors of major tension since Danny's sisters have remained friends with his first wife, Vera. By the way, Vera is still heavily involved in the entertainment industry. Good for you, Vera. Good for you. In February 2024, there were more rumors that they had split up. Julia shut those allegations down by sharing a photo of them kissing on Valentine's Day, along with the caption, My Forever Valentine. But no amount of mushy-gushy photos can stop all the allegations. In July 2024, an insider told Yahoo that Danny and Julia lived separate lives. The insider said that since moving back to Malibu, Danny was spending more time with his surfing friends and industry contacts while Julia was drowning herself with film projects to keep busy. They just scared of people saying, told you so, like me, because I'm, <laughs> I'm first in line with the told you. <laughs> I got my mouth ready to be like, <laughs> Due to how their relationship started, most people are waiting for things to implode. However, as of this video, Julia and Danny are still going strong and just celebrated their 22nd wedding anniversary in July 2024. She told Vanity Fair that their marriage isn't rainbows and kittens all the time, but every day with Danny brings her joy. That's good. Hang in there, y'all. Hang in there. Fight. Fight for your marriage. Go ahead on. Even though it didn't start right, it might end right. Just keep working. We wish them and their family nothing but the best.